What's up, everybody? Welcome to Smoking Weed and Talking Mixed Martial Arts. This is episode number 49. My name is Jared. I'm here with Paul. What up? We are, as usual, coming to you from the fight capital of the world. Beautiful and not so hot anymore. Las Vegas, <coughs> Nevada. On today's episode, we are going to take a look back at the UFC Copenhagen event. We're going to take a look forward to the upcoming UFC 243, which sees the return of champ Robert Whitaker against interim <coughs> champ Israel Adesanya. We're going to talk a bit about Bellator and their featherweight tournament. We're going to definitely talk about boxing with a possible fight of the year candidate recently with Earl Spence Jr. defeating Sean Porter via split decision. And, of course, we are going to talk about some announced fights. But before we get to all of that, we're going to do our Weed of the Week. Smoke weed every day. This week, we are smoking on some Zookies. I haven't had a chance to hit this yet, Paul, but you were coughing your ass off a second ago. Is it good? Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's never really bad except for that banana OG last week. Yeah, this one's a Zuki. That, that wasn't bad. Blue dream. That's the blue dream. That's the other one. Uh, we, got, we got some blue dream and we got some Zookies. Now uh, let me hit this real quick and uh, we'll talk about this strain for a second. This is animal cookies crossed with the original glue, formerly known as Gorilla Glue, number four. The original who? Original glue. <laughs> That's a tasty strain, man. It's pretty colorful too. Uh, Animal Cookies is one of my favorites. That's good. It's uh, Girl Scout Cookies Cross a Fire OG. And, of course, Gorilla Glue number four has three parents. That's, uh, what is it, Chocolate Diesel, Chem Sister, and some Sour <coughs> Double. So that's a lot of good uh, lineology. Lineology, is that a word? Nope. I don't think so. made it up, though. So. made it up. We're going to roll with it. You know what I'm yeah. talking about. That's nope, some good nope. lineology. lineology. Now we're... Girl Scout Study Cookies, Fire mine. OG, Chocolate Diesel, Chem Sister, Sour Double. No wonder this bud tastes pretty good, man. Oh, yeah. And this Dream, this Blue Dream, that's pretty common weed. You can find this in about anywhere. It's classic. We don't have a lot of it, but it's a good sativa. I'm going to hit that, too. How was your weekend, man? What did you do? Got high and watched the fights. What about we you? We had a lot of fucking fights this weekend, <laughs> dude. Fuck yeah, but dude. There's a lot of combat sports going on. on I found Saturday. time to bounce over to the movies real quick. I saw, uh, I finally saw It. Chapter 2. Yeah, I saw that the week before. It's pretty good, I guess. It was all right. I got to admit, I was kind of disappointed. Let me hit this weed real quick. What did, what did you think? I mean, it's cool. I mean, this wasn't very scary at all. Nah. I mean, I'm a big Stephen King fan. Hell, you've seen my library. I got every King book out in hardback. I happen to have the original first edition hardback of it. It's worth like $800. So, I mean, I like the story. I like the whole fucking thing. But I like the first one. I thought that was good, but... I was kind of disappointed, but you know what was cool? I saw it in a 4D theater, which is, I think Vegas is one of the few cities to have those. They're not real common yet, but have you checked out a 4D theater yet? Mm -mm. Not too many people have. It's pretty dope. It had a, uh, basically, here, let me hit this weed. <laughs> basically, it's a regular movie, but it's also got wind, rain inside the theater. Wind blows in the theater, rain. They pump, oh, like, smells know. inside. So, like, they're cooking bacon on screen. They pump the fucking smell of bacon in the theater. They got additional strobe lights all around. And then, also, your chair fucking moves. It vibrates, like, shifts, goes <coughs> up and down. So, that shit made the movie kind of cool. So, like, every time in the movie, <coughs> when Pennywise was <coughs> chomping on somebody's face, like, water yeah. would fall from the sky. So, you'd get, like, splatter on your fucking face. Shit like that. So that was fun. It's intense. You know, it was kind of expensive. It was fucking like $24 a ticket. So, you know, but Jesus. I go back and see something else in the 4D. It was pretty cool. It's definitely a good movie to do it. Yeah, for sure. But I don't know. Overall, I left kind of disappointed. Like, that's not the ending in the book. Like, that's not how that shit goes down. They don't go on a quest to get little fucking trinkets and yell at Pennywise until he, spoiler alert, Shrinks into a fucking baby clown with a big head. What the fuck was that? I was trying not to laugh. I was like, man, that's pretty silly. <laughs> baby clown. Yeah. Uh, that was whatever. Weird. Strange one. It was weird. It was weird. But enough about the movies, man. That's not what we're here to talk about. What did you think of our fucking 
this past weekend of fights was pretty spectacular. We had Bellator, yeah. we had UFC, we had a bunch of minor league MMA, we had boxing. Yep. Capped off with the Earl Spence Jr. versus Sean Porter unification bout. I liked how everything had its own time slot too. It's like all timed out throughout the day. It was nice with that UFC yeah. card airing early. Yep. Yeah. Hell early. A lot of fucking upsets on that card. You want to start with that? Yeah, might as well. So that would be the UFC Copenhagen card. Headline We're not really going to go into most of these fights, but I, I just want to kind of point out, like, there's a few big upsets on the card. You had uh, Khalil Roundtree getting TKO'd in the first round. Dude, yeah, what was that? That was a shocker. Well, we both picked Just got put in a bad win. situation and got fucking beat down, dude. Did you see him at the weigh-ins? Yeah, that was fucking strange. That was weird. Yeah. That dude's a beast, though. He is a beast. He He's like got screamed a... in Khalil's face, and Khalil just like did the super flinch. Yeah, yeah it, was it was weird. weird. And then uh, fucking Gunnar Nelson lays another egg, like we talked about. Jesus, that was really disappointing. Gilbert Burns is no slouch. No we slouch, about but him last week too. But still, damn. I thought, I thought uh, Gunnar would have that one in the bag going in there. So I, I did too. That's four in a row for Gilbert Burns now at one seventy. Yeah, he's, He's looking really good. I mean. Called out uh, Mike Perry, I don't want to say. So that'd be a good that'd fight. A, I didn't. I was. On, I didn't know he did that. That's that is an interesting fight. I don't know. Or either Mike know. Perry called him out or something like that. But I saw them. Perry can't fuck with that jujitsu game of Gilbert Burns, but he might be able to knock him out. Yeah, maybe knock anybody out. I don't know if Nicholas I like that fight Dalby Perry. called out uh, Mike Perry too. I like that fight a bit better, maybe. Yeah. What do you think? Shit, I think both fights are good. I'd like to see Dolby and Perry though, because Dolby will stand with him. I don't think uh I don't think Burns will stand with him. No, definitely not. That's why I think that's not a very good fight for Mike. But you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh what about the main event? Shit, that was crazy, man. Yeah, it was 185. I mean, that's some title implications. More like rankings implications on the line. Jack Hermanson going in. We both picked him to win. I, he was I thought he was good. gonna handily beat Jared Cannonier. Who, as we talked about last week, is dropping, you know, since dropping down to 185 now, all the way down from heavyweight at the beginning. He's just fucking One three in a row, row. now. Yeah. Yep. He's got pretty wins over Anderson Silva and Hermanson now. Shit. Second round TKO, I mean. And he fucking smashed him on the ground. He, he sure was, did. That was, that was uh, intense. It was pretty impressive. And he was he pretty was, well written off by oh, every yeah. major MMA everybody, reporter, yep. anybody everybody before doubted. this fight. I mean, I watched an entire video. I think it was... I think it was by Luke Thomas. I could be wrong, but and I felt the same way. It was just, I mean, giving him no chance to win, yeah. like none. Like this was a fucking, not even supposed to be happening. It's going to be a mauling, and instead yeah. he goes out and impressively wins. He's a problem at one eighty five for people. I think definitely. I mean, I'd like to see him matched up against. Oh, I don't know, Costa. Oh, he's unlikely to take that fight. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? I think maybe like a Romero, maybe Costa. Ooh, that'd be a nice Another big too. puncher. Yeah. Because what he's doing right now is he's just fucking showing his explosiveness and handling the smaller guys. So I'd like to see Costa just because Costa's on his same size range and to see how he'd handle that adversity. Costa's ranked pretty high right now because I think he's... Costa's Jared's talking about he deserves a title a shot, but I don't know about that. You know, a top three. Likely in his future if he holds out a little. Yeah. But Costa's talking about holding out for a title shot, so I don't know. Yeah, that's that should all get sorted out, which we'll get to uh, UFC uh, in Australia here in a little bit. But other than that fight on the card, I mean, that definitely stops from Anson's momentum that he had going on. So he's just going to have to yeah. figure it out from here. We'll see, the, if this was a see all these middleweights are in a strange situation, too, because, like, there's definitely, like, gaps in everybody's abilities and and uh technique but like everybody is probably gonna fight each other a couple times like i i would think because everyone is so close you know what i mean at, at the top of middleweight there's so yeah. many guys who could fight for the belt right now and have some kind of claim after one win you know what i'm saying so and we're seeing like a lot of the guys who were the old like guys who were kind of carrying the division Leaving and going to light heavyweight now, like Jacques Array, freaking um, Wideman, Rockhold, 
So now they're all light heavyweights. So now you got guys like Hermanson, Cannoneer, Costa, Adesanya, people like that who just have like freshened up the division. Mm-hmm. So I could see a lot of a lot of guys like like this fight possibly could be ran back in the future, just because it was interesting enough to, you know what I'm saying? Just because all those guys are competitive enough that I think Hermanson could get on another streak and possibly earn this fight again. You know yeah, what I'm definitely. There's been a like you were saying a, a for sure changing of the guard at middleweight. So, yeah, you know, he's not done just because of uh, kind of everywhere in like the, in the UFC recently. Like a lot of these older guys are kind of getting shucked to the wayside. Like I mean, I know he just fought for the title, but kind of like I don't know. I don't think like Frankie Edgar has See, it I anymore. I knew you were gonna say Edgar. Yeah, I know. I hate to say it too, but Edgar's same thing with like like I don't I don't know why. I don't know why um, Faber came back. I don't think that was a good idea. I think if he fights Dillashaw and waits for Dillashaw, Dillashaw will eat Dillashaw's him alive. Dillashaw's going to fucking love. Dillashaw's in his yeah. prime of coming off two years of yeah of doing nothing. Doing yeah. nothing. Faber will be, what, 42 at that point? Yep. I mean, he's and, 40. And would have to have won two 41. fights in that in that time span. Well, that's silly. There's no way he's not fighting until Dillashaw comes back. No, that'd be pointless. Just fucking retire then. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're just going to retire again. That's a bullshit fight. I don't think that happened. So I don't. I just feel like this like new generation is starting to take over in a lot of these weight classes. And yeah, I can't disagree with that. We're you just know, a lot of light heavyweight. We're welterweight, same here. thing. Welterweight. Although welterweight, there's some older names in there still. It's still like the younger guys are kind of eating the older lions recently. Like yeah, I mean we're yeah, gonna talk Usman. about the welterweight title picture yeah. here later on in the show, but I mean look at the two names <laughs> fighting in that. You know, yes. that definitely represents the changing of the guard at that weight class too. Yep. So the rest of the UFC Copenhagen card, I mean, it was fairly entertaining and all. But I don't think there's really too much to talk. There's about. A, yeah, it was all pretty clear cut, like yeah. flash <laughs> knockouts. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Well, speaking of flash knockouts, let's shift over to uh, to Bellator real quick. Uh, how about you know one that stood out for me? They had two events this this past weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one, one in that Dublin, really stood out was uh, then one AJ Boston. McKee and his father on the second night fought in the same card, fighting on the same card. His old man <laughs> Antonio McKee. I mean, he won his fight too. Wins his fight at forty nine years old. old. What and a his savage! Son goes out and, and they cornered each other. Yeah, that was. That's his son cool. goes out and knocks his guy on eight fucking seconds. Yeah, second fastest God. KO in Bellator history. He just start, and he starched him. It was legit as fuck. I mean, he came out. He threw, I think, a, an overhand right, and the dude blocked it. Ooh. And then he followed up with two more, and dude was down. I think he took. One, he was clearly out. He stiffened yeah, he up. Down, took yeah. one on the ground. Ref swooped in. Man, clean. McKee is looking tough. He, he is looking <clears> tough. <throat> I mean, that he advances now in that in that uh, featherweight tournament. He's gonna fight um, Derek, Derek Campos, Campos so I do next, believe, right? Yeah. In, uh, what in December? So December. he's fighting again pretty fast. Pretty quick. Well, he fucking fought eight seconds. So. Yeah, he's not <laughs> he too worn out. Wasn't too worn out <laughs> at all. So uh, yeah, that's a tough fight too, though. Derek Campos is a he's a tough uh, vet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's not. I mean, he's. I feel like his time is more or less past, but. He's not way past his prime. <clears throat> you know, switching around kind of to the other night on the Bellator card, uh, we'll circle back around on that featherweight tournament, but what about on the first night we had James Gallagher, admittedly fighting a late replacement, but still with uh, an impressive quick win, as well as Michael Venom Page with yet another <coughs> flying knee as well. A little bit of controversy with the fucking... Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit real quick, because that really pissed me off. Okay, so it's MVP versus I don't even know who he was fighting. Some let's be real here, somebody he should beat the shit out. Yeah, of. it was kind of a, a he got knocked out in his last fight. It was kind of a, a get back it out on track situation. First loss of his career, he fought a guy who talked shit from Europe. You know, tough guy, whatever. And uh, so they're talking shit back and forth throughout the pre-fight and post-fight and during the fight. And now, who was the referee? Dan Mergliata. Dan Mergliata. Deci- Dana White's favorite. Yeah. Decides to go ahead and <clears throat> fucking take a point away for taunting in the fight, which I've never, ever seen. Yeah, he seen. stops the fight, takes a point away from MVP for taunting. Then in the same round, his <laughs> the opponent dude gives him the fucking him off, bird, yeah. doesn't get a point taken away no. for taunting. And then after the fight, so uh, MVP knees him in the head, knocks him out. 
and as he goes down, the guy like gets up and like tries to say he's not out, and he's like wobbling around in the octagon, and uh, MVP is like taunting him because that guy talked a bunch of fucking yeah, shit. There was a lot. Of like back and forth. people can say what they want about MVP, but that guy talked a lot of shit to him back. So like he got everything he said he was going to get. And uh, you get what you get when you yeah, talk some shit. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, so, and then Dan Mergliata goes and and goes ahead and calls. Tells MVP, you're a piece of shit in the octagon. Yeah. So Dan is not a fan of MVP. Tooling just, up some... There's just... N- that, that just can't happen. That's no, just something that just can't fucking un- happen, dude. That's the exact opposite of what's supposed to happen. The referee is supposed to be completely unbiased and just in there enforcing fucking rules. You can't I don't care right. how you feel about how you're anybody carries shit. themselves. You can't fucking do that you're a Plus fucking you're professional right octagon too. jesus or, christ whatever they call it in fucking Bellator. well here's the thing though is like now if i'm mvp i turn around and i say hey i don't want that ref ever refing my fight again which he did and yeah i, as I don't should. yeah as, as you should and i think the commission should look into that and maybe say something on that because it's it's a situation where you, you just can't do it it's Plain and simple, you just can't. There's there's certain lines you do not cross, and he crossed those lines. This is a guy that's infamous for his fucking mistakes in the UFC. I mean, he doesn't even ref UFC anymore, does he? I don't know. I mean, I'm almost certain. Dana well, there was Wright's a UFC fucking, like, card the same day, and he didn't to fucking have him in the UFC anymore after his latest fucking thing. But that's yeah. Well, it's just like he I seems don't know. to consistently earn that fucking reputation because he fucking goofs a lot, and this is you can't. You're right. You can't do that. So, uh, just like just like I said, there's just lines you can't cross as uh, as a professional. You know, there's it's, fucking silly. It, it's a part of the job that you you can't cross that line. You know, it's fucking ridiculous. Didn't Gallagher win by a flying knee as well? Didn't he? No, I think he subbed him. He subbed him. Oh, maybe you're right. Yeah, you're right. So he knocked him down with a flying knee. He subbed him. I'm not him. sure. Connor was there celebrating a win. Big night yeah, for SPG and, uh, on the Dublin card, really. I think almost yeah, all their fights. Peter Quilly won, too. Yeah. That was a fucking crazy fight, too. Yeah. That was a good night for the, for their team overall. Oh, yeah. And then the next night, their boy gets a title shot. Yeah. So sure. Yeah. Should be good things going on with them in Bellator. And Nicholas Dalby fights for SPG Ireland now, too. Does he? I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. So that's a he won, too. So they're... Yeah, they're they're fucking one. They're, those are all pluses for them this weekend. Yeah, for sure. Well, so how about that Bellator tournament? The rest of the bracket was kind of fucking played out last night in some weird, weird I like way. a lot Drawing of the names, picking fights. What did you think of all that lead up after? It was cool, but like it was a little drawn out. The but Pitbull win. yeah, it was a little drawn out. But I, I, I don't know. You know. Pitbull beats Archuleta. You know what I think they also were trying to do. Also, is I think. They were trying to start their fight after the Spence Porter fight. Because if you watch it, like, Spence Porter ends around the end of the first or second round of the Machina Masasi fight. So That's it's like, smart on their part. you know what I mean? I think they were timing it out like that because in the, the big chunk in the middle was kind of like, lengthy like you know yeah they did this weird thing if you didn't see the broadcast folks where instead yeah. of just proceeding on to the main event but it's cool though because then you get that instant gratification though. thing where they picked fights and yeah you do as a fan though you do get that instant gratification of of seeing the the guy th- who's gonna fight next instead of having to sit there and wait by your phone thinking oh god when are they gonna announce it like the ufc and shit like that with yeah, this I get what they they're got. trying to do and plus it's pretty that's cool. the time to maximize the audience that they have in front of them yeah, to, to and they more or less let their guys pick their own fights to to get more interest in the tournament. Yeah, itself. So uh, we got um, Campos and uh, AJ McKee in December. Right. Then Caldwell and Borix, January, and then February is Emmanuel Sanchez versus uh, uh, White, and then uh, Pitbull versus. Calvillo or however you say it. Yeah, Caldwell. In March. Yeah, he was pushing for that. Uh, yeah, he Pitbull wanted that fight. Pitbull fight. Pitbull fucking goes, you're a loser. Pitbull seemed to not want none. At least not right now. I don't know, man. It was weird because even Coach Eric was saying, he's like, yeah, pick Darren Caldwell. Yeah, I was kind of surprised he didn't, but, Cause, but I think it's what it is. I don't know. 
I I feel like it's a little bit a uh, strategic mind of uh, Pitbull of not wanting to, a tough fight till the final. Yeah, because you can't really you can't avoid anybody, but you can postpone it a little bit. Like that. Well, we'll see and by the way, out. I want to give some props to Juan Archuleta. He's a fucking he is game as fuck, dude. He didn't give a shit. He was in there. He was he was in his face. He he took some big shots, and he just kept coming forward. Dude, he hit, he hit Pitbull with the weirdest shit I've ever seen. He got knocked down, and then he like <laughs> oh, hit him yeah, with like yeah. a double up kick, like with both his heels, and it was weird. Yeah, that was very odd. And it, it, it fucking affected Pitbull too. He was like, "Oh, what the shit." A little bit of controversy leading up to the fight. His corner man, TJ Dillashaw, we mentioned Yeah, just earlier. 10 minutes before. They said yeah. on the broadcast, 10 minutes before the fight, TJ Dillashaw was told he could not corner him. Like, okay, I understand if, if that's the rule, he can't corner him. But 10 minutes before the fight, guys, come on. You couldn't have told him this the week of, two days before, you know? That's like, what made me wonder if it wasn't a complaint from Pitbull's team at the last minute. Could have been because they which are. Which is just. That's they are Henry Cejudo's team. Henry Cejudo and him train at the same gym, so that's it's possible. Probably was because why would the commission who oversees that wait till ten minutes before they go? Oh, yeah, never mind. But if there's a complaint, I mean, it's all spec here on my part. I have no fucking idea. But yeah, you know, just guessing. I wouldn't be surprised at all if there was a fucking last minute complaint. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of a kind of a bitch move, but whatever. It's possible. It's possible. Or a <coughs> stupid <coughs> oversight from the commission. <clears throat> Either way, <clears throat> we talked about them delaying that possibly due to the boxing that was taking place on the same night. We might as well just talk about that since it correlates at the same time. What did you think of what I think up to right now in boxing was fight of the year thus far? Yeah. Earl Spence getting the split decision nod. Over Sean Porter, which I, I think is p- perfect. I don't think Porter won the fight, but I think he deserved a split decision, if, if you get what I'm saying. Yeah, that was a fucking scrap, dude. It was dope. Earl Spence is... Back and forth. I mean, I had Porter win in that first round, and then it seemed like Spence would win two, then Porter would win one, and then Spence would win two. You know what it was? Mind. It was Porter was was executing his game plan, and... Spence was just standing there and telling him, no, nah, you're not going to do that to me. And just yeah, hitting him it with. was a Sean Porter-style fight. I mean, he yeah. came in, he bullied his way inside and fought mean and tough. And Spence, Spence just took it. beat his body right back. up, man. Yeah, fuck yeah, he did. Here's what it was, too. It was Spence was a much more active fighter. Or no, sorry, Porter was a much more active fighter. But Spence was a lot more accurate and, like, powerful with the shots. Yeah, he was much more accurate. He landed more. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, it would go in, and it would be like Porter would throw two or three punches to get in, and then he'd land one on the on like on like his way out, and then Spencer would hit him with three of, three of them on the way out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was like, just like Such the trades were forth. uneven. I had an even going into the 10th round, or the 11th round, I mean, after 10. And then in the in the 11th, we had Spence just pull ahead with that. He had a knockdown. See, I had... I had Spence up two going into eleventh, and then the knockdown. I had to win him by. I mean, I, I can, I can see. I had him the same as well. Yeah, I mean, just really. Yeah, it was so close. But then with the knockdown in the eleventh, I mean, I kind of sealed the deal. Yeah, for sure. And uh, if spectacular, yeah. I mean, just I what mean, a, what a fucking great fight! It would have been a tragedy if they would have. We, we were talking about this a little bit before. You were saying that if he, I basically asked you, what would have happened had he not knocked him down, and you said that they would most likely have ruled it a draw. Had they ruled that a draw last night, it would have been hell on earth, dude. There's no way they would have been able to call that a draw. There was too much action in that fight. There was a lot of action in the fight. I mean, looking at the scorecards, I think I don't think you can make that argument after they released the actual scores. Yeah. But, you know, that was just me, me thinking I wouldn't be surprised at all the way boxing is. It's a draw. For, that that's what I'm saying. It, honestly, that's what I, that's yeah, exactly that's what I'm saying. It would be it would be that situation where it's like, oh, it's a draw, a rematch. <laughs> Everyone pays double. <laughs> We're gonna take two years to make it, and you're gonna pay by us the 4K triple. Four K broadcast yeah. for ninety nine ninety five. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> Fucking great fight though. I mean, Hell you yeah. can complain about spending money on that. Good undercard too. We had uh, 
what uh, Benavidez get his title back after being yeah. stripped. You know, he did some fucking coke. He got caught. <laughs> he got stripped of his title. Shit happens. Shit happens, right? He pulled a John Jones. <laughs> Shit. Only John another Jones another didn't fight lose though. Title for another Cole, fight where, where both guys were in the pocket and he was just landed more. He was just yeah, landed, you know, landed, landed, landed. Darrell got that. He got a nasty cut. Yeah, you know, sure which sure. Benavides definitely took advantage of because Darrell just had to go for it. I mean, he just had to fucking go all out. Yeah, Benavides just kind of fuck him up. With that. That's what kind of sucks about getting a, like a serious cut in boxing. It's like taken so much more seriously because it's oh, all yeah. head strikes, you know. Yeah. So it's like MMA. They'll let you bleed all over. The they'll let you bleed canvas, all right? over the place with boxing. If if you can't stop bleeding and it obstructs your vision whatsoever, you're done. Yeah, so I mean, he's worried that the so fight's going to So you got to go stop, for broke. So he went for broke. And yeah. Just, you know, That's what sucks. Because that was up. a good fight. Carved up. It was a good fight, though. Oh, man. Boxing's been fucking dope lately, man. That's it has. Really, Holy shit. It seems like, you know, ever since the... the Fury came back. It's like it sparked not just in the heavyweights, but it just seems like there's just, good fights. I don't even think over. it's that. I think no, it just it's so his... much more eyes have been on the sport than than there was before. That whatever it is, it's fucking good shit. Yeah. Right. I just want to go back to a little point uh, about the main event. Also, is uh, after the fight, we had a uh, Danny Garcia jumping into the ring and uh, talked about fighting Earl next. Danny Garcia, yeah, because that Crawford fight, as much as we'd all like to see it, it's probably not going to. It's not going to happen anytime soon. No. Probably each guy is going to fight two or three more times before they actually fight. But I don't I don't see foresee them either of them losing anytime soon. So Pacquiao was talking the noise before the for fight who? about for Crawford or Spence? Spence. I like to see the winner, that, but you know, yeah. I'd fight like to see that of that poor fight. You think it's fight. too soon for Spence? I don't know. Pacquiao is one thing about Pacquiao is he maybe isn't as physically, like, scary as he was and fast and powerful as he was when he was younger. But his game plan now is so down-packed that he is he can still fight how he used to when he was younger. You know, he never diverts from the game plan. He constantly, you know, he, he picks his rounds. He picks his rounds to take off. And that's mm-hmm. kind of where he got in trouble in, the, uh, uh, in his last fight was, like, he came out strong pressured him, and then kind of faded off late. So I'm curious to see if, with a younger guy like Spence, if Pacquiao could push him, you know? Seems every time I want to write Pacquiao off, he just keeps on winning. That's another thing. is yeah, like He has that champion's mentality. Yeah. But fuck, man. Spence took a hell of a shot last night on multiple occasions and yeah, just kept I mean, coming forward. Was, he, he, he took blows all night. He's got a Powerful chin, man. One. Holy Four, shit. I mean, that was a good fight. Both guys, man. Spence was laying some shots on Porter. I mean, obviously he knocked him down, but I there were some shots before that where I was I was thinking, man, how is Porter still on his feet? I don't know he would just bully his way. I want to say in the ninth round, the ninth round he like was you know how they kind of were getting into these situations where they were like clinching for a second, but then going like shoulder to shoulder, beating up the body, and then and then Spence backed off, hit him with the uppercut, and then the right hand and fucking. I was did not know how Porter was still on his feet. Yeah, he's like, got a high chin. I mean, really, it was on display last night, even with the knockdown. Such a such a both guys. Man. I Holy mean, he doesn't shit. lose much shine with this loss at all. I don't think so at all. And he's definitely a problem for whoever he fights next, and is still right in the midst of this title contention. If he gets back, you know, matched up well, we'll see how this fucking plays out. Yeah, definitely. And there's, this is another thing, is like, welterweight is back again. What like, is in this bowl right here? Is this the Zookies? Yeah. All right. Welterweight's back, man, because you got to think you got. Welterweight is definitely back. It's heavyweight and welterweight oh, yeah. are probably the two most interesting weight classes right now. And that's really the, the two you'd want to be. I mean, heavyweights for obvious reasons. And then welterweight. I mean, that's the size of, like, the average person in the world. It's like, yeah. oh, fucking welterweight. You yeah. Know? So everybody is just like... And you look at the stories in that division, obviously. It's fucking... It's great for boxing. It's good for fans. I never realized how small Porter was till last night. Yeah. Fucking Spence is big motherfucker compared yeah, to him. Is. Spence is, like, a weird Porter's big, thick though. and wide. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. Big, like, Spence is kind of wiry. all fucking huge when he was bullying his way inside, but... Yeah, Spence is kind of wiry. But, like... He still has a lot of power. You know what I mean? 
Man, those body shots he was hitting him with were fucking just savage. He got away with a couple uh, low blows, though. Yeah, there was some low blows going on, especially uh, there in what the 8th, 6th, 7th, 8th, right back in there. There was a few yeah. that I went unfucking noticed by the refs, but um, Sean Porter's a tough motherfucker. Yeah, dear G. So we're unsure of what's next for both of them, but we did get some clarification on another big fight in boxing, which is uh, we finally got the date for that Wilder Ortiz rematch. Yep. Uh, that's going to be right here in our hometown Vegas. of Las Vegas on what November twenty third. Yeah, that what you said. Thanksgiving weekend, it sounds like. Which that that's. Mm. So Ortiz that's... only lost to Wilder. Mm -hmm. He looked good after it, too. It was pretty much... That's a very dangerous fight. Much more dangerous than the fights that Fury's been taking. Although, if you're, anything can happen, man. Yeah, just look at his last fight. You know, it was a testament to that shit. And I'm not knocking his opponents, especially... <clears throat> Although, Wilder did prove he has an iron chin also. Yeah, he took Ortiz's best shots. He took Fury's. Fury's got power. He doesn't, you know, he's got only 20, 28 wins with 20 knockouts, I think it is. So he's not like a super power puncher, but he's got eight that have gone. He's got distance, that volume punch. He's got that volume punching, you know. He's not, Ortiz has got a fucking power. He's got that power. Even yeah. at 40, he's getting so close to over the hill, too. I keep waiting. For, when is he going to go? But again, heavyweights, just like in MMA, they can go for a while. Fucking! I heard some story that Deontay Wilder would be like, he's gonna show, he's gonna do some new punch for this fight <laughs> to knock Ortiz out with. Can you, can you imagine? I don't know. <laughs> Hits him with some random ass shit. You're just like, what the fuck? What the fuck just <laughs> happened? He said, Bow. <laughs> some crazy fucking street fight and shit. I don't dude, know. He could do it. That's an uppercut, dude. That's what you. <laughs> Bob to the left and uppercut. <laughs> so we got, uh, um, you know, you want to keep on the theme of some announced fights here, here in Vegas. We got another big card here in Vegas. Uh, that be happening bef a little bit after that November 23rd Wilder Ortiz fight is we finally got a date for Colby Covington, Kamaru Usman, welterweight UFC title unification in my mind. It's Colby is the interim champ. Shut the fuck up. Well, he is. You can't you know, just take the belt away. But anyway, we're not going to rehash that old tired <laughs> ass argument. But finally, December 14th, it tops off three fucking title fights on that card here in Vegas at T Mobile Arena. So we got Colby, Kamaru, JDR versus uh, Amanda, and then which one? Oh, Alex and uh, Max Holloway. Yeah. How could you forget that? That's a fucking Alexander good Volkanovsky card. versus Max I wonder, Holloway. I wonder what's the co main? They haven't announced that yet. We're all just assuming that Usman Covington Damn. is the top. The top I wonder what the other two fights in the card are. I don't think a whole lot has been announced. I'm going to go ahead and look You should it. look it up. Yeah, I'm going to look that up real quick. Just because that, that just seems like that's going to be the barn burner of a card. I and mean, people were talking shit, but this fight's finally here. And uh, I think it's a toss-up. I think either one of those two guys could win, Usman or Colby. Yeah. Uh, there's only one other fight on there. It's Jessica I versus Vivian. Some other. Yeah, I don't know who that is. It's whatever it is. I don't think much has been announced. But I. Oh, one one that we did not talk about before. But uh, we have uh, another fight that was announced this week also. Brian Ortega is finally making his comeback and he's fighting the Korean zombie. Yeah, that's a crazy fight. That's a too. fucking yeah, fight, dude. I love, it. I love that fight. That's, mm. It's at the end of the year. I think it's the last fight night of the year. It's like December 18th or something like that. It's fucking sick, though. Oh, man. Yeah, I like that. Who do you fight like in that fight? Shit, I don't. Probably the zombie. You think so? Yeah. Think Ortega's taking a step back? Hmm. Or do you think Zombie's just... I he's, think Zombie's a better fighter than we think he is. It's possible. Did Zombie... I'm not knocking Ortega at all. I just think he's... I think Zombie's... Zombie won a, a fight 
since he lost to Yair, hasn't he? Or is yeah. this his first fight back? I know this might, might be his first fight back. I'm not sure. But I, the Yair fight, I mean, I, I hardly counted against him. I mean, he has not yeah. but he was clearly whooping that ass till just a, a freak, freaky thing. Literally one second left, gets yeah. KO'd with some crazy ass backsided, upside down, ninja elbow. Yeah, that shit was intense. Which was dope, but I don't. I don't really think that takes any shine off of his fucking his improved skill set since he's returned to the UFC. And I think we're Brian Ortega has been uh, working with uh, kickboxers lately, with That's Vinny Shorman and uh, what's that other guy that um, the kickboxer? I can't think of his Joe name. Joe Schilling? Right no, nah. He he's uh, he was on Joe Rogan's podcast with Vinny Shorman. Oh, I know who you're talking about. I can picture him in my eye, but my marijuana-induced uh, brain can't recall that his name at the moment. Yeah, but either way, uh, he's been working with Brian Ortega. Well, that's so interesting. I wonder how he's be showing up his uh, stand-up game. Do you think this card's going to get any better? Do you think they're going to load it with a bunch of uh, lower-quality fights since they got three? I mean, it's the last. The it's the last fight of the year, so there. It's going to be one of two things, and I think it's just going to be d- dependent on time. So it's like really just like who's going to be left and who doesn't have fights. Mm-hmm. You know, that's pretty much what it's going to come down to. Are people going to want to fight this year or next year? You ready yeah. to make a pick on that Colby Covington Kamaru Usman fight yet? Do I even need to say? Usman, I presume you're taking. I think I think Colby's gonna win that fight. I think Usman's gonna beat the fuck out of him. I think they're too similar. And I think Colby's gas tank's better. See, I don't think so. I think they have equal gas tanks. I think Kamaro is just technically and physically better than Colby. He's a physically better version of what Colby is. Colby is. I don't know. The, hold on, hold on. Let me finish. I don't know. I think I don't know. Col- Colby is like the blue collar, like, like work, hard work version of what Camaro is. But Camaro has just physical better, physically better gifted. He's more Colby. physical gifts than Colby yeah. does. Yeah, and I think, like, he has a more explosiveness. He, I think, he hits harder for sure. He's I think got he has better the power kicks. Edge, but uh, he's more athletic. Mm. I feel like they Honestly, have the I disagree gas on the tank. athletic. I think he looks more muscular. No, I think his gas tank will fucking go. And I don't think it'll be an ass whooping, but I think Colby's going to win the decision. Why they didn't it go when he fought decision. RDA then? RDA, RDA, that fight was going the entire time, five rounds nonstop. We watched it live. Do you there think was he not beat a... RDA better than Colby did? Yeah. Do you think he beat Maya 100%. better than Colby did? Yep. I see. I disagree on both. That's why I think. With my MMA math. And I'm not just like I'm on the Colby Covington bandwagon. I just think he happens to win this fight. See, I think RDA and Colby was an actual, actual freaking competitive fight. Colby and, R- yeah, and Usman and RDA. Saying some nonsense like, there you go. <laughs> Dude, you, you need more, you need more oh cannabis God. in your life. Because you, you're not remembering well. So let's, let's make that a bit worse. You're tripping, dude. RDA didn't even get... Uh, didn't win a single <laughs> second of his fight against Usman. Usman completely dominated him. Same thing with Maya. And he broke both his fucking hands and, and knocked him out, dude. Mm-hmm. Come on. All right. All right, then. You can't we'll see, deny we'll see. We got December 14th. We'll see. I mean, I, I, it's not like I'm going to be butthurt if Colby loses. I'm not invested like that. I just, I just think he wins. And then I think he's going to be uh, pretty insufferable after that. But we'll see. <laughs> We will see. There's another uh, fight that oh, we we've had a slew of announced fights. We'll yeah, see what's, what's um, the next Jeremy one? Stevens and Yair got rescheduled. For, oh, finally. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's in October, right? October, yeah. Yeah, like what the the last card of October. I don't know which is. That's good. But we need to get that done right yeah, away. Get a re. Is some I think it's Boston. The Boston card. Yeah. That's better for Stevens. <laughs> yeah. Shit. A lot better altitude there in Boston. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Shit. Fight at 7,000 feet in Mexico City. So, who do you have in that fight? Oh, I got Stevens now for sure. <laughs> Yair, to me, is... I just his behavior is very odd. I find it very odd. I don't understand so, why he's so mad. Uh, 
I don't understand any of. His I actions. like his skills and I like him as a fighter, but I just don't understand why he's so angry. And I think it ties into like some some, not that he's weak mentally, but his mental game doesn't seem to be on point based on some of his actions, and that's why I would give. I thought Stevens was going to win the first fight, anyways. But now I really think Yair's head is somewhere. I don't know. He's been acting fucking weird. Yeah. I don't. Very get it. strange. And Stevens, I don't think appreciates this. <laughs> Sudden narrative. I don't understand this narrative. Like somehow, of all people, Jeremy Stevens was scared. Like he's a bitch. Like, yeah, like, like he's know. a guy who, like, I'm, uh, ah, I tasted the power. I can't fuck with Rodriguez. I'm gonna lie my way out of this fight. Yeah, like, I on. definitely see what you're saying, but I, but I, I, I never thought insane. that. I don't understand that narrative because we're talking professional fighting here. No one's scared of anybody. So at at the end of the day, I think it's just right. more of a thing where scared. two guys are talking shit and trying to, you know, get a rise out of each other, and everyone is just running with it. Like, with all these stories, you know what I'm saying? Like, all these stories that are out, there's, like, everyone's just running with it, however angle, how many angles they want to take it. Like, I saw, like, like MMA fighting is like, oh, uh, Yair Rodriguez and Jeremy Stevens lash uh, homophobic slurs at each other. It's oh like, my God. it's like, come on, guys. Like, don't, we're, like, there's so many stupid angles you could take this story in, like, there was like I saw another one was like Jeremy Stevens attacked by Aaron Rodriguez in hotel room. It's like God, get the fuck out of here with that shit, man. It's like both guys up walked up to each other and said, "Hey, what the fuck's up? I thought your eye was hurt or whatever. What, why'd you give up or what? I don't know. What like you know those heated arguments they and they called each other basically, you know, called each other a bitch and then. Fucking Stevens pushed him. Yair pushed him back, and then that was it. <laughs> like, it was like everyone, like, played it like it was, like, this fucking... MMA media loves to make it so much more dramatic. <clears throat> yeah. Like, I get it. There's definitely a feud there, without a doubt. Right now, there's a big feud between those two because of the history of what happened and all that shit. That's a big issue with non-PC words yeah. that might have been thrown in, seriously, in private conversations that yeah. no one would have even known about if... That media itself hadn't blasted it all over. Yeah, exactly. You know I mean? Exactly. Like, exactly. You you can't get mad at because somebody said some shit in a private conversation that yeah. you made public. Yeah. <laughs> I always find that ironic as fuck. Yeah, and it's like not only that, it's they're trying to antagonize the other person. So it's like, it's like, it's not like they're trying to fucking, oh. uh, they're they're commenting on something tangible about someone like you know what i'm saying it's like they're not talking about somebody or something they're literally throwing fucking insults at each other jesus christ i know people are over like here like, like at some award ceremony was like uh, i hate fags or some yeah, horribly like offensive some sh- shit yeah. like that you know what yeah, i mean like, they get mad he calls some dude a fag i mean that's what he said right yeah I'm exactly and everybody's like oh and then he called him and then he said it right like, back and then they pushed each other like it's that like, like should, that should be like that story. headline was so ridiculous yeah. it's like Jeremy Stop. Stevens, Yair Reg- Rodriguez throw homophobic slurs at each other. Like, what are you talking about? Shut the fuck up. Seriously, we don't. <laughs> we just don't need it in MMA. There's, there's plenty of other storylines. I think that's, you know, I don't know. They love the fucking the soap opera bullshit. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's stupid. I think there's a whole lot more being made of it than there is there, and I think uh, Yair Rodriguez wins the fight. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see. We we should make a little bet. I should bet on Steve. We got, we got we fucking, bet on dude. We get, we'll parlay it, dude. You take Colby, okay. Colby and Stevens, and I'll okay. take. Well, there yeah, needs yeah. to be some consequence. Here. We didn't yeah. we didn't discuss this pre show at all. This is some spur of the moment. What's the consequence? I, I mean, know. should it be just something simple like you know, someone's gonna buy somebody some weed? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, buy me some fucking weed, dude. <laughs> all right, all right. Winner owes the loser an eighth. All right, that's cool with me. All right. I'm gonna go. Now, what happens if go we split? You got to win both fights, like... <laughs> right? You got to win yeah, both fights. Yeah, both fights. So we got to get a All third right. fight. What's the third fight? We got to get a third. Around that same time. Mm. Well, I mean, I'm taking... I don't, I don't know what else is around the same time right now. We're talking October. On that well, card... we still got some time. We can pick Calvin another one. There's Calvin Cater. We don't, uh, we don't have to finalize the third fight. Hold on, I got today. one. Is on that, that same card... There's Calvin Cater and uh, um, Zabit. I'll take Calvin Cater. I don't want to have to pick Zabit. I don't like that fight. What? I mean, I like Zabit, but I don't have to fucking 
Uh, dude, that's like almost a guarantee. You fucking won't uh, take it. Uh, oh. We need a bigger fight than that. All right. I'll take. Oh, you want well, to take let's, Volkanovsky? About, oh, let's go this weekend. <laughs> how about the Nunes fight? You want to take uh, GDR? Nah, about... I'm taking Nunes. No. Fuck you no. Wanna, you want to take Volkanovsky? Maybe I'll pick Volk to upset Holloway. Um, wait, mm, you just told me fight. you just told me if I want him, and then you said maybe you'll pick him. Yeah. So what? Uh, so what, what, you, what which one are we talking here? I'm fucking high. I'm just tossing out ideas over um, here. Um, let's go. Um, you want to well, then let's Ortiz segue this in. Let's segue. Ortiz. What about uh, next weekend? Uh, how about Adesanya versus Whitaker? I'll take uh, Adesanya. Well, I'm taking Adesanya too. What the fuck, dude? What the fuck? You know this. Don't lie, dude. You know this. <sighs> All right. I'll tell you what. We'll just pick a fight. We got some time before then. By next episode, we'll pick a consequential third fight. Loser buys winner in eighth. Sure. <laughs> All right. Well, uh fight that is also was announced was uh Deontay Wilder, Luis Ortiz in Vegas. Who you got? I like Wilder in the win in the rematch. Wilder. I think Ortiz is a live dog. He can definitely knock him out. But uh I, I like Wilder. He's he's gonna pull it off. That's what's strange though, is if you look back to that uh, the first fight. Wilder had to knock him out or he was going to lose that fight. So I don't necessarily know if Ortiz were to just stick to the game plan in which he did not in the last fight. I think he could probably get it done. Because honestly, the whole thing with fighting Wilder is you just got to you gotta fight close and you got to get, you can't let him loop the big shots and hit you with the long punches. You know, you got you to gotta stay in tight. And make it a little dirty, you know? All right, let's say that happens. Let's say Ortiz <sighs> gets the fucking uh, the win. Do you think that he takes the slot against Fury that Wilder had, or do you think they go with a rubber match? No. I think he probably goes with a rubber match. Then Fury fights a winner of uh, Ruiz versus Joshua. That'll Unless probably... that goes to a rubber match, too. Fuck. <laughs> and then Tyson Fury would be left with nobody. You th- I don't think Anthony Joshua. Oh, he might. I don't know. I don't know. There was a rumor going out that Anthony Joshua could fight. This rematch might be his last fight. That he might retire after, win or lose. See, I was just gonna say is that I don't. I don't really see if Joshua wins him giving a third fight to Ruiz. I mean, maybe, but I would be surprised. I would think that wouldn't happen. No. Nah. I don't well, think that's going to be the blockbuster fight everybody thinks it is. I mean, I think it'll be blockbuster inside the boxing world. Yeah. But as far as the general public translates into pay-per-view dollars, I don't, I don't think it's going to be this monstrous fucking event. <clears throat> yeah. But we'll see. We shall fucking see. First, to do that, Wilder's got to get by Ortiz. Which Definitely. So that's ultimately, who are you picking? You picking Ortiz? Shit. You didn't make a pick. I'm taking the live dog, dude. I'll take Ortiz. Are you? Well, we should just make that the third fight then in nah, our bed right there because I'm taking Wilder. No, because that's ah. such that's such a that's such a dog. Ah. That's not even like I don't even believe that pick. <laughs> like I just <laughs> like I could just think it could happen. All right. Well, then we'll pick another fight, like we said. What about the BMF? Who are you taking there? I'm taking Nate. Fuck you. Well, you, you I want fuck Nate me too. because I have the wise pick. You, know, you have to take Nate in that. You have to. No disrespect. What's under that card? What's what's, what's what's the, what's under there? On the New York City, yeah, Madison Square Garden. I'm not even sure. What about Till Gaslam? Who are you taking there? I like Gaslam. I'll take Till. That's the third fight. All right, there you go. There you go. Gaslam. Fuck and Till. you. Till's gonna put back on the Boy mat. Boy Kelvin, he gonna smoke some herb up. He gonna train hard, and he's gonna knock that fool out too. Well, speaking of middleweights, let's uh, talk about next weekend. Tell me. We got a got fight Israel down in uh, down Just in a little thing. Little little tiny little thing. And some little fucking arena down there, huh? Yeah, no. It's no, gonna, but seriously. It's going to be the largest alive fight in fucking UFC history. Yeah, the, uh, it should break the gate record as well. It's definitely breaking the attendance record. Oh, as yeah, far as for I sure. It, and thus, it should break the all time gate record as well. Yep. 
Was it, this was the same? Was it the same stadium that uh, Holly Holm and Rousey was at? I think so, but I could be mistaken. I'm not really up on all that shit. Yeah. As far as what's the biggest stadium venue? But now this is different now though, because not only is it the biggest stadium and that they got, but it's the two biggest stars they got too. And you got them from both sides. You got them from the New Zealand side, and you got them from uh, Australia. You know, yeah, where yeah. you got. I mean, although both guys are from New Zealand, uh, Whitaker has like spent most of his life. You know, it just unifies uh, the whole area. Yeah, has a reason to show up. For Everyone's sure. gonna be there, and you got a lot of guys uh, that are from there fighting on there too. You got two of Vasa fighting on yeah. there. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. and then also you got Dan Hooker fighting. Rage and Al. Rage and Al's heading down it over to Australia. He said he didn't give a fuck. Yeah, that's a tough Broke out. his computer again on Ariel's show when he talked about it. <laughs> Rage and Al's fucking funny, dude. Dude, I love that guy. He's a classic. That's a tough fight, though. Dan Hooker's a tough dude. Dan Hooker's tough, but he's... I like Al to win that fight, but I don't yeah, I think Yeah, I think Al takes it. Yeah. I think Hooker's still a, still too little fresh in the gills. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's he's tough, but I just don't think, like, I feel like he's run into the most issues against these more, like, veteran fighters. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That, that Whereas he, once he gets his shit going, he, he's unstoppable. But if you stop his rhythm and you disrupt him and, and get, at, get inside of that range he doesn't want you in, you know what I'm saying? Like, he doesn't yeah. like that close. He likes to be... Outside, throw the kicks, you know, kickbox pretty much. And then uh, if, you know, Al, he, he does have some grappling game, so I'd imagine Al keeps it close. He has a good grappling little, game. I little mean, he's bit been dirty boxing. stuff this out to date. Yeah. A little bit of dirty boxing, and, uh, yeah, I think Al gets it done. I like him in the fight, too, but it's going to be a fucking scrap. All right, well, uh, let's talk about the main event then. Robert Whitaker. How long has it been now? It's, it's been, been a while, long dude. Long time sure. since Robert Whitaker has stepped into the octagon. Well, Adesanya has been one of the busiest fighters in the UFC over that same period of time. Mm-hmm. It's a tough man. But though. is that is that a plus or a minus? Yeah, there's because, arguments either way. Because Adesanya is also coming off a fucking five round, drag it out. I'm I'm willing to die war. Is literally what he said. He said it, in multiple interviews. He said he looked across the octagon. And looked at Kelvin and said, I'm ready to die. And then fucking went out and beat his ass in the fifth round. He did. He fucked him up, up in the fifth Kelvin round. Gassimo he looked fresh, round. dude. He looked like he brand did. new. <laughs> so I wonder, because Whitaker is going to be there. He's going to be fucking tough in the first three. But I wonder where he's going to be in the fourth and the fifth. Because as we saw, this is that's what happened in the UL fight. Is Whitaker came out and dominated the first three rounds. But in the fourth and fifth, there are, I can't remember if it was third and fifth or fourth and fifth, there was arguments of two 10 mm-hmm. So There was. You know, Whitaker's a tough motherfucker, and it's going to be a, I, I could very well see this going like the Gaslam fight for I both can, these yeah. guys again. Yeah. Um, but I think, although Gaslam's a tough motherfucker, I think Whitaker's another level of tough motherfucker. I think it's going to be a decision win for Adesanya. Split decision? No. Unanimous? Yeah. Damn. I'll I take think it. like you just said, I think it'll be close in the beginning, and I think in the end, Adesanya's going to piece him up. See, Similar I, to the fifth round against That's, what, that's, that's what I'm worried about, though, because I see, I could see Whitaker winning the first three and losing the last two and still walking away because the champion wins the decision. See, I don't know. I, I can see Adesanya coming out winning. We'll we'll see. I just think the first three is going to be close, but ultimately he's another is, one. He starts he out. starts slow. Here we go. Adesanya he has that like tie like style. He start he starts slow. The first round he's he's not the same. I mean, although he's no, had I mean, some, he's, he's had some he's quick finishes, rhythm and range, but you know what I mean though. He's he's had some he's had some slow starts. Yeah. Whitaker's tough man. I'd like to see. Where Adesanya's grappling game is at against a guy like Whitaker. Whitaker's a tough motherfucker on the ground. 
and he can take Adesanya you down. has been improving his grappling from fight to fight. I yeah. imagine it's no different at this point, but we'll see. We'll see just how it's, it's gotten. We're going to learn a lot. I wonder how much, like we were talking about before, that I wonder how much of that damage he still carries into this fight. Whitaker? Adesanya. Adesanya, huh? I don't think How long ago was that? It's been a while now. Nah, it was only like three months ago. Nah, it was like three, four months. Still, that's pretty tough. That was a fucking war. It was a war. But I think it'll be fine. That was probably the best fight I've ever seen. For MMA, I think that was probably was fight of the, of the year to this point. I've ever seen. Right? Yeah. Especially like live, like watching it, like... Like, obviously, there's probably better fights that happened before I was born, before I was, when I was a kid, shit like that. But I'm saying, like, as far as, like, fights I've seen in my lifetime, that was one of the best fights ever. Yeah, it was February 10th. So, oh, February, man. March. So, seven months. Oh, it's in seven months? Oh, okay. Yeah. Never mind. He should be fine, then. Yeah, it's not a little over. So, yeah, he'll be healed up. <laughs> God, I wonder. Flies, dude. Damn. Yeah. Well, how much time did Whitaker have to take off because of that? Uh, because of his injury, he's been out close to a year again. He hasn't fought much. Yeah. It's gonna be a tough fucking fight, man. I don't know, but definitely thinking Adesanya etches out the decision. Just Split a few decision. days, man. We'll get to see it. I I agree, hundred percent. I think we're gonna have a new fucking. Some new blood and a new superstar. I just don't see him knocking Whitaker out. No, it'll be a decision. Whitaker will keep. If he, if he can. If he knocks Whitaker out, though, barrel. holy shit. Yeah, that'd be a shocker. And then he, if I was Adesanya, then I'd jump on the mic and call out Paulo Costa. I'd be like, hey, you juice head, let's roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Costa. We'll see what That's happens. That's the money there. fight right there. Remember, they were talking shit not too long ago. Yeah, Remember, we talked heat. about this. We there's talked about this, right I want to say, around one of our first episodes about how they were talking shit back and forth, how both of them could possibly end up in a situation for the belt. And if Adesanya is able to pull off a fucking win on uh, next Saturday, we very well could see that. Mm -hmm. I like that fight a lot, too. That would be fucking pretty dope. Now, is this main event in normal time zone or... Is it? Let's check they've, that out. Because they've I been probably, catering into the countries they've been going to recently. With an event this size and that many people there live, I assume that it's uh, in their time zone. That's going to make a lot more sense to me. It's probably in the afternoon or some shit. Because aren't they a full day ahead, I believe? I don't know. October 5th. I'm just looking for the time. I don't know. It's not, I'm not showing a time. It's the date. Seven p.m. Seven p.m. Our time. <clears throat> yeah. No. So. What? It's like it? Sunday afternoon over there. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that about wraps up the show today. So. Uh, yeah, I think so. You know, I was looking at this, uh, we talked a little bit last week about this hemp fusion, uh, this full spectrum hemp extract. I've been using that sleep one throughout the week, and I got to say, I think it's making a difference. I don't really know for sure yet. It's kind of the, a product you got to keep using. Yeah. And I don't want to bullshit anybody, but I got to say, I took it for three nights in a row, and mm -hmm. I thought I was sleeping better, because you can tell by the circles under my eyes, dude, I sleep like shit. You, you know me. I, I don't yeah. fucking sleep well. I'm always complaining about it, even with the amount of weed I smoke. And so I thought it was helping. And then so night before last, I didn't take any, and I slept like shit like I always do. Took yeah. a couple more last night, and uh, I slept a lot better. So I'm going to keep using these, man. There's a full bottle here, and I'll let everybody know what I think. But I think so far, i got to say I'm kind of impressed with it. But Yeah, I use the CBD lotion. It actually helps. It's like it kind of feels like an icy hot sort of because it has that, that mint, um, like. Uh, it's got that has, menthol yeah, infused into like, it too, yeah. so it gets that going as yeah. well. Well, cool, man. I'm going to try out that balm as I need it. And we'll let everybody know what we think. You can find out about them if you're interested, folks, at uh, hempfusion.com. And then you can find out all our information over at swapmay.com where you can go ahead and uh, get some, uh, get a t-shirt, maybe a jacket, 
Something cool, you know, when it's coming, motherfuckers. Absolutely. <laughs> Links are there for everything. Uh, WBUZ 95, Thursday nights, 6 p.m. here in Las Vegas. That's 9 p.m. Eastern time. You can also catch the video on YouTube. You can yeah, catch the podcast, like button, whatever podcasts are button. distributed. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Peace. Peace.